Hello, my name is Simon Davy. Welcome to Our World in the Limelight and this the fourth of my Woodland Habitat talks. Last time I spoke on woodlands it was the Scottish and Western British Atlantic rainforests. We now move south to the New Forest which is argued by many to be the best example of ancient woodland in Europe. Grazing by ponies and stock keeps it open and the light levels high and this procedure has continued ever since William the Conqueror declared the New Forest as an area devoted to his hunting. This results in a very rich lichen flora. The best woodland is also known as ancient and ornamental woodland. Examples of these are South Ogden wood, seen on the left, and Stubbs wood, seen on the right. As you can see, these woodlands are very open and the light levels are excellent. And you've got grass in them too, as a result of the grazing. This photograph of Fursey Lodge shows how open they are, well grazed and lacking in a flowering plant flora. Many of the ancient and ornamental woodlands support in excess of a hundred lichen species. In the rest of the country, enclosures are fenced in order to keep grazing animals in. In the New Forest we talk of enclosures which are fenced to keep animals out. Most of the new forest is unenclosed and grazing is kept to the right level for the best conservation. It was in the 1960s that the newly formed British Lycan Society visited the new forest. Most came by train and the obvious station was Bewley Road Station in the east of the forest. They chose to visit two ancient or an ornamental woodlands and these were both in the east. They were Denny Wood and Matley Wood. They found them very poor in lichens and declared that the New Forest had lost its interest for lichens. They did not take into account that they are close to the Solent and that easterly winds would bring air that was contaminated with sulphur dioxide from the Forley power stations. This was treated by the late and great Dr Francis Rose as a challenge and he spent much of his life after this studying the New Forest showing that it was indeed one of the richest areas for lichens in the whole of Western Europe. And you can see here Francis Rose uh, talking to students in the New Forest. It was largely by studying the lichen flora of the New Forest woodlands that he and others made a list of the more common lichens that are closely associated with the oldest and least altered woodlands. Woodland is judged in importance by the number of these ancient woodland indicators present. Francis Rose also made a list of higher plants which may be used in the same way especially in woodlands elsewhere, as there are so few flowering plants really in the New Forest because of grazing. There is also an unpublished list of mosses and liverworts which can be used in a similar way. He and others created a list of lichens which corresponded to the amounts of sulphur dioxide in the atmosphere. This book is air pollutions and lichens written by a large number of people and edited by three of them including David Hawksworth. The lichens chosen were fairly easy to identify and school children throughout the country made studies of air pollution which resulted in the production of invaluable maps that made the importance of polluted air a matter to be taken very seriously. As a result, action was taken and the levels of sulphur dioxide were re reduced. Certainly, 
Fossil fuel energy production was a major cause. Although sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere has reduced, today there is still pollution. And this pollution is alkaline and results from the overuse of fertilizers, especially the use of inorganic compounds, plus the impact of catalytic converters in cities and towns. This has meant a reduction in those species which were most tolerant of sulfur dioxide and results in studies still being carried out in good faith by schools which have been producing false results as it is those indicators that were most tolerant of pollution in the past that are now the ones that are disappearing. Francis Rose was was most interested in the way species of Liberia were present and listed and mapped all the trees which supported these species. These are Liberia pulmonaria, seen on the left, and Liberia virens, which were the most frequent. Liberia amplicibur was found on a very few trees, while Liberia strabiculata was absent. The presence of these species indicated a pollution level of zone 9. Pollution goes from zero lichens, which is zone 0, and zone 10 is pure air. Woodlands in the New Forest also support some interesting insects, such as the only British species of cicada, which is extremely rare, and sadly may now be extinct. This is Cicadetta montana, a photograph of which is shown here. Also of interest in the new forest is the woodland cricket, Nemobius sylvestris, which is very scarce in Britain as a whole, but not uncommon in the new forest. It is very close to impossible to photograph as it is very active and hops about from place to place very fast. And these pictures have been taken from a book on woodland insects. There are some beautiful moths that occur in the new forest woodland, and these include the dark on the left and light crimson underwings, and the light crimson underwing seen on the right. Also of interest amongst the new forest insect is the giant lacewing, Osmilus fulvicephalus. It is relatively scarce in Britain and may be disturbed during the day amongst streamside vegetation. A particularly fine piece of woodland that is less grazed than most of the unenclosed woodland is ivy wood near Brockenhurst separated from heavy grazing by the Lymington River. Because the grazing levels are less high, it has a richer ground flora, as can be seen in this photograph. Grazing causes the flowering plant flora of the new forest, of the main new forest woodlands, not to be particularly rich. There are a good number of books on the natural history of the New Forest. A very important one is that in the, in the New Naturalist series, which unfortunately I do not possess. A hugely relevant book is Grazing Ecology by Franz Vera, which was part of my Woodland Introduction talk. The one I am focuses, focusing on today is Iconic Air Pollution and Lichens by Ferry et al. Given here, which I've shown already, much of its content was based on the researches in the New Forest. Another book on the New Forest uh, is this one here, and uh, written by a number of people, um, and... Uh, it contains some interesting information. And a third book of importance is that 
of the flora of the whole of Hampshire. Uh, written by Francis Rose and the late um, Paul Bowman and Lady Anne Brewis, all three of them very great naturalists. And it, uh, Francis Rose was particularly responsible for the New Forest part of this book. Thank you very much for watching this video. As may be apparent now, woodlands are a habitat of special interest and while all that I can do is to touch the surface in these videos, hopefully there are snippets that are new to you or of interest and food for thought. Please like this video, comment on it and subscribe. We do appreciate you having watched what we have been doing Thank you.